Hey guys, welcome to the video. My name is Clinton Lofthouse and you're tuned into photomanipulation.com. In this layer breakdown, I'll be taking you through the steps that it took for me to create this stylized composite portrait image. Also, I will be showing you a quick and dirty technique to get rim light in your images. If you're new here, welcome. We're not your typical Photoshop channel. We specialize in photo manipulation, digital art and advanced Photoshop techniques. If that sounds like your kind of thing, be sure to like and subscribe as we put out five videos a week. Let's roll the video and enjoy. So this is the image here that we are going to be breaking down. So this image was basically a, it wasn't planned. I was browsing through Adobe stock and I came across this guy here and I thought oh, I quite like his pose and I like the way he looks and I thought well can I add him into an image what kind of image can I create around this guy so first of all I thought maybe a circus but then um, it just didn't feel like it was circus and then I thought oh he looks a bit like someone who would, would do some kind of extreme motocross biking and then the rest of the image fell into place so let's go into Photoshop and we will start breaking down the layers so this is the background layer here, or part of it. This is mainly the sky. Obviously we used the one with a little bit of a stadium in, but I did then download a different stock image, which was this one. And this was just to create the stadium that these bikers go in. So it's quite a good base, and I blended the clouds from this stadium into this cloud layer here. And then I quite like these lights, but I wanted more of them because I knew I wanted to make the model backlit by all these lights and the other bikes as well. So I just basically, roughly with the lasso tool, cut out these uh, pieces here and then just pasted them down here. And I did it with the, some of the other lights on the left hand side too. And then with a hue saturation, because I wanted this side to be red and this side to be blue, I just started changing these lights as well. So basically, Going into the hue saturation, I just switched the hue here to the reds and ticked it on to colorize. And then I started adding some glow onto these lights as well. Just painting with a brush on a blank layer on linear, den linear dodge blend mode. And this was uh, on color dodge. And then I started bringing in the lights onto the left hand side again, roughly cutting out very roughly. With the lasso tool you can see here I've even cut some of it off but that's hidden so that's fine and then again with hue saturation bringing them in and then yeah well, I wanted these ones blue so I changed these top lights here and here and here I do change to a different color and then again just doing the same with those lights on the left hand side like so and then with a uh, hue saturation changing them and then adding some more glow to the lights Again, the same way we added the glow to the right hand side. And then using a curves adjustment now, as you can see, just pulling down the highlights on this side. And darkening the image overall. We wanted a very contrasted image. From there we started using again hue saturation adjustment layers. And adding more glow and colour to these lights in the background. So on the right hand side, the left hand side. And then we started bringing some of the background objects in. So the the ring of fire, what sometimes these bikers go through. So basically this was just a an overlay. So as you can, um, where is the, so the overlay is here. So I just brought in, let's just show you what that looks like. So if I take it off, so it looks like that. So it's just an overlay, so you bring it in I then free transformed it with distort to get it at the right angle and then if we switch that to a screen blend mode it keeps all the pixels lighter than 50% grey and gets rid of all the pixels darker than 50% grey so you get this cool fire effect and then basically this um, frame here I painted it with myself with the brush uh, and that was the ellipses tool and I just uh, created like a, a semicircle and then just use the stroke to get the black line going around the ellipses. And then I brought in another overlay, which was here, this one here. 
just to add a little bit of smoke. So I'll turn this one off so you can see it. As you can see there, again, just a smoke overlay. You put that onto screen blend mode and it blends in perfectly. So as we go up, we have the background motorbike. So this was basically this guy here. I cut him out from a stock image, what uh, was from Adobe Stocks. So all these stock images I have used in today are from Adobe Stock. So if you did want to follow along or do something similar, you can download them. Uh, there's a, an affiliate link below this video. But uh, one thing I do want to show you is these uh, cool rim lights what I've got on. And I've, I found a hack for these to make it a little bit easier. Sometimes you have to paint them in by hand and it takes for ages. But I found a little hack, but I will show you when we get to a different part of the image. So basically I brought this guy in. I just pulled down the, uh, the curves to make him darker. And then we've got the rim lights. And then a little bit of curves adjustment there just to take away some of the contrast by pulling up the blacks at the bottom there. And then again, another overlay, bringing it on, putting it onto the tire. And then again, another overlay and just a little bit of smoke coming from that smoke from his tire. So it looks like he's gone through this hoop, but maybe a little bit of uh, fire has caught his tire. So little details like just this just enhance the story a little bit. So now we have some more smoke. So now the smoke is from coming from the bottom of the stadium or from the atmosphere of the stadium. So there's going to be this fire, there's going to be smoke, there's going to be um, soil or some sort of um, gravel that they're riding on, which when they're moving around will put dust into the air. So you get this dust what kind of floats around in the air. So that is that. And I just painted that on a blank layer with a cloud or dust brush so let's bring in the model now so this is the model so I didn't really do much to him at this point I just cut him out and brought him in and then I did a little bit of dodge and burn as you can see it just adds a little bit more contrast to our main guy and then I brought in the motorbike at the side so as you can see um, I brought the motorbike in and then I just use some curves adjustments just to pull down uh, the tone of the bike. So I pulled the highlights right down. And then, so this is without. So, and that's with the curves adjustment. And then I did some desaturation as well. And added some reds into these highlights with hue saturation. But if you look now, one thing I did is I, was, I started to paint the highlights on to get this blue light. What's hitting this guy here? it's coming from these lights and then I also wanted it to hit this bike and then I started painting the highlights and it was a pain in the ass to be fair um, sometimes it works good sometimes it work it doesn't work but it does take a lot of work so I did come up with a hack so if I just click this layer on here voila instant highlights and it was a super easy way and I was just thinking how can I do this quicker this is taking ages so what I did was let's just go through this now so let's just delete this group here so the motorbike glow so what I did was all I did was I clicked on the motorbike and I duplicated it by pressing ctrl and J and then let's just pull this out of this group so we've got this bike here the main bike above in this group and now we've got a bike below so let's just turn this one off so that's the bike below so what we can do is if we go to hue saturation if we hold down alt and clip that to the motorbike what we can do now is we can click on colorize and it goes to this nice red so let's try and get a blue what kind of like the blue in the lights here so all we would do is slide this hue slide uh, slider across so we're getting to somewhere like here so we want it to match also the the highlights on this guy's jacket which that kind of is doing now and let's click that so we have this blue bike and we have uh, the blue light here and we've got these this blue reflecting off him but this doesn't look realistic and if we put the bike over the top you can't see the blue so what we do is if you click on the uh, 
bike layer what you've just changed the colour of, click the move tool or select the move tool by pressing V and make sure you select it up here and then if you with the arrow keys on your keyboard just start to press to the side a little bit like so you'll see you get the duplicate bike popping out of the side so let's just move it up a bit and then let's go back into hue saturation and let's just make that lighter obviously because it's rim light and then click it down a bit we've gone a bit too far there so with the keyboard now just click it in a bit to the side and up like so so let's click it one up one across and that's it we've basically got instant rim light and it's it's a bit of a quick and dirty way to do it but it works a treat so basically all I did was I just duplicated the bike I colorized it into the blue what that is and then I just slid it out a tiny bit to the side from underneath the main bike and you get these cool rim lights. So that is the quick and easy rim light technique which I accidentally made up <laughs> as I was working on this image. So let's now get back into the rest of the layers. So moving up, we've kind of got most of the image in now. We've got our bikes in, we've got the bike, we've got the ring of fire, we've got our main model. Now we just start bringing in some light leaks, like so. So all these are painted on blank layers, so let's just turn them off. Like so, that's without. And then I'm painting these over the top of the model, so the light blends uh, behind and in front of the model, so it bleeds over the model, so that just gives us a bit of realism. Uh, and it kind of blends everything together nicely as well. So as you can see, uh, linear dodge on that one, linear dodge on that one, linear dodge on that one and linear dodge on that one so just sampling the highlights and then painting them over with a brush on linear dodge blend mode and then with a curves adjustment I brought in a vignette just to darken the outside of the image a little bit so I just pulled down the highlights and as you can see here this is where I painted the vignette in and then I started with color so I brought in a gradient map oh, actually this was contrast so um, I created a gradient map, I switched it to black and white and then I just put it onto a luminosity blend mode and that just adds, adds some really nice contrast to the image and that's also a very quick and easy way to do it. And then we bring in the colour grade. So I wanted to add some more reds to the, to the image, so into the shadows and into the colour grade. So let's just go into the gradient map. So this is the colour grade gradient map for um, this image so I added more reds into that and then I just lowered that down to 5% and then the selective color I added some reds into the blacks as you can see here minus 7 and a little bit of contrast plus 2 in with selective color and then that gives us these nice this nice like painterly feel to the image and then color effects pro 4 I just added a little bit, if you can see, it's not much, a little bit of bleach bypass. And then added some selective sharpen with the high pass filter on a overlay blend mode, just on the main guy because it was a little bit blurry. So that's without and that's with. So that just sharpens him up, up a lot and it's only affecting him. So it's selective sharpening. And then I did a global sharpen of the whole image. Again, high pass filter this time on uh, uh, soft light and I just lowered the opacity down a little bit and then I just added some more light effects in so a bit more glow on a blank layer just painted it in and then I brought in some more overlays so these are like sometimes you get these little dust particles what float in in front of lights and they, it kind of reflects the light off them so as you can see if you look at the lights I just added them in over the top and then let's just turn these off so you can see what they look like so this is what these look like without the blend mode on. So again, screen blend mode deletes, gets rid of everything that's darker than 50% grey and keeps everything that's brighter. And that, my friends, is the end of this breakdown. So not only did we go through all the layers, I also give you the new technique, or new technique in my eyes, I've not seen it done before, of the quick and easy rim lights. Um, the rim lights only work if, the, if it's backlit, but it still works. Um, so yeah, that's it guys. I hope you found 
this interesting. I hope you've learned some new tricks or maybe you've been able to refine some in your workflow by watching this. If you did, it would be awesome if you could share this video on social media, if you could tell your friends about our channel. We love teaching you guys. We, we have fun creating these images and we're getting some awesome feedback in the community and in the groups. So thanks a lot guys and I will speak to you very soon.